I take one. Action. The Crow was always a favorite film of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you're taking the fall. I know. 26. Yep, that's good. 26 G2 A cam, take one. It's to make a film for those fans, uh, by a fan. It wasn't just like your typical horror film. It, there were so many different elements to it. I didn't want to set this film any other place but Detroit. My name is Justin Main, and I am the executive producer and dean in Crow. Crow fans and maybe comic book fans would know that the original graphic novel and the original movie take place in Detroit. Coming from a Crow fan, there, there's really no way to one-up that film, and nor would I want to. It's, it's, it's a piece of cinema history, and you don't try to remake it, you don't try to reboot it, you don't try to outdo Brandon Lee's performance, because it, it's going to be impossible. I think the best way to honor its legacy is to keep the legacy going. Dean, who is this ordinary Detroit man, and his girlfriend, Sam, they are about to celebrate Halloween and go to a Halloween party, and then a whole bunch of stuff happens. Dean wakes up in the trunk of a car, has no idea where he's at, and through a series of flashbacks, he starts to discover what happened to him and to Sam over the course of one night. When he finds out what happens, all hell breaks loose. James O'Barr's work was basically what brought me to where I'm at right now. If it wasn't for watching The Crow or reading the, the comic books when I was younger, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And to be able to, to, be able to get the kind remarks that I got from him and get, to get his, his best wishes, uh, it, it meant the world to me. I wanted to see how normal people reacted to these extraordinary events and, and you know, like the cast, the cast is, oh my god, they're so good. My name's Matt Zakel, I'm the director of Crow. I don't want to feel like I have to emulate something that's like so untouchable to so many people. I, luckily I had Justin Maine. He, he was there to really help reel me in to like help integrate those elements of Crow, like foreshadowing certain things, adding references here and there, just saying like, hey, just make sure like we can do it in our own way, but like if we did this, it'll help like kind of connect the dots a little bit, make things a little more uh, connected to the franchise. My name is Peter Poulos, and I'm the director of photography. And Justin brought it up to me. It's you know it's comic booky. It's a style that uh, I hadn't really done before. I'm more of a horror guy, slow burn type stuff. So getting a chance to do action and then somewhat of a comic book type film really intrigued me. And then Justin's just such a great actor and person in general, and he's helped me so much with my project, so I wanted to return the favor for him. The original film is very monochromatic, uh, very diluted color palette, and kind of made it a bit more modern, and we're still gonna probably go with a little bit of des desaturation on the colors, but trying to find a balance between modern and then trying to hone in that classic look that the original film had. We did utilize a Pro Mist filter a lot for the film, which kind of gives all of your highlights a nice kind of fall off and bloom. Um, and it's more reminiscent of what like film stock will do when you blow out the highlights. Honestly, at this point, when it comes to cameras, it's really hard to like say like you have to use this, you have to use this because I mean you can shoot a film on an iPhone nowadays, and if you know what you're doing, you know most people won't bat an eye, other than maybe really big film techs or nerds. Um, but honestly, I just see more and more the industry just more and more independent content rising. You know, with the whole streaming services and everything. I mean. There is not an excuse now to not make your film, and I think that's just going to keep getting more and more apparent to people. Is like, as as young as you know, ten years old, you can go make a film, you know, even if it's just with your friends, and it's it's something that I think is just going to help progressive progress that the Michigan film uh, base, and just hopefully try to show everyone, you know, that we can make quality stuff here in Michigan. We don't need everything that Hollywood and LA has to do it. Um, it's just going to keep getting better from there. You know, I, I really think that Detroit has already like a rich independent filmmaking community. I think the issue is it just needs more glue to put these things together, you know, and we, they, we need companies and uh, yeah, production studios and distinct voices to distinct filmmakers that are actually going to showcase what makes Detroit different in the independent film world too, you know, like what can we do here that nobody else can? I mean, think you go up north to the sand dunes, you have a desert, you, there's forests everywhere, there's great metropolitan areas. It's like, from, as far as the scenic plays, I mean, Michigan's great. It goes back to the technology. We're so much further than where we were when Crow first started. So it makes it feasible for 
you know, people that don't have big studios or big budgets to, to make something quality that people will want to see. I'm Tenille Tereskevich and I am a producer and also I play the reporter. Oh, I've been a fan of The Crow ever since the early 90s. I think it is just a tragic love story. You know, you've got this kind of dark superhero type, you know, and I think we all want to be heroes, but we have darkness. So I think that there's going to be a lot of elements to the characters and the story that people will be able to relate to. I think that with Crow, there's already an existing fan base. So that's been really helpful um, now that they see the quality and see the visuals that Justin is giving them. You know, they're getting really excited and they haven't seen nothing yet. I think the thing I'm most excited for is, is the live Crow and um, just being able to get to share that with everybody. That was definitely something that we didn't know about in pre-production and just as things grew and, and mounted, you know, it was something that we were able to add to the production. My name is Callie Bustle and I play Samantha. Now, I've been an actor or wanted to be an actor for as long as I can remember. It wasn't until about two or three years ago that I actually like accepted, you know, I can do this and I will do this. And Sam is definitely a character that's much different than I am. She's a fighter for everything. The story, one of the main things that Justin told me at the beginning of the audition was that it's actually just a love story all along. You know, the themes of the film and the first film, you know, like they're, they're deep themes of mortality and like, why are we here? on earth, like what are we going to remember at the end. Um, when I started this project, my, uh, my, it was actually like my father had passed away about three months before and I've been sort of dealing with that process like throughout the entire production. By the time this is done, I'll be working on this for close to a year. So it's been actually, it was a year last Wednesday and so it's just, it's, those themes have just been kind of sitting in my mind in like so many different levels and I hope people just take away that, you know, there's no one way to interpret something as grand and universal as something like that, you know, and even in the context of the Crow series, you know, it's like, and I just, I hope people appreciate, it. I mean, yeah, the film for what it is. Uh, originally we were set to film in April and that was like right in the heat, right in the middle of the quarantine. So we ended up having to push back to late May and we were lucky enough to have the quarantine lifted literally days before we started filming. I almost had to push it off again and maybe even potentially cancel it, but we really took a, the best precautions that we could with the knowledge that we had at the time. Obviously, a lot more information has come out about how to get the filmmaking business back into working effect, but back in May, there wasn't really all that much. It was just kind of do this and do that, don't do this, don't do that. So yeah, this was the first project that I was a part of after COVID had hit. Um, we had a couple projects actually lined up, Crow being one of them, and then that happened, it pushed us back a couple months. And I was honestly a little nervous, you know, with, with how all the procedures would go and just how much that may slow down the, the process on set and add to our, our time. My name is Rana Saab and I am the COVID compliance officer on Crow. Just the way production was, everybody had to be in their own area. You know, camera had their own area, actor, hair and makeup and me being the COVID officer I was just kind of everywhere I had full access um, so I, it it was different it was uh, it was challenging I think what helped is that we all knew each other too we really wanted to film this project you know of course it got put on hold and we didn't want to wait any longer you know we waited about five months six months and we were we were eager to get back on set the big thing I really wanted to, to accomplish was featuring local filmmakers that had the passion to really really do as best as they could I wanted to bring those people on. I wanted to bring filmmakers, I wanted to bring cast, I wanted to bring crew in that would give 150% to the film. And I think that's maybe the one thing that a lot of independent filmmakers can do is try to find others that are just as passionate about their projects as they are. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make what you want to make. You don't want to toe the line. You want be adventurous, take, take risks, really push yourself Stuff that you didn't think that you can accomplish, you can accomplish. I, I, I can tell you straight out, like with, with Crow, there's a lot of stuff that I had no idea how we were gonna pull off and we ended up pulling it off and not even just pulling it off, but actually like doing better than what we originally expected. As long as you just give it everything you have and just don't really take no for an answer and find a way around it if you do get a no, you'll make something great. If you really try hard enough, you really push yourself and you take risks. Despite everything, you can, you can accomplish amazing things.